Hey, what's up, guys? It's Arlen, and I'm here with another video. Um, and if you guys want to donate for the next video, go on, the, <clears throat> go on the link down below. As you can see right here, Matthew has donated for this specific video. And thanks, thanks to donations, that has helped us reach the goal already. That was insane. So, um, as I was saying, thank you to Matthew, thank you to all the others who have uh, BLM, yeah, all these other, uh, like, thank you for contributing. I know that it's hard out there, and I don't expect you guys to donate, but when you do, it is awesome, because regardless if you donate or not, I will be making these videos. Anyway, anyways, Arlenators, let's get into this video. And this is going to be a touchy subject, so if you guys are not into that, I need you to click off this video. Um, if you are a child, I would advise you to tell your children. Uh, I mean, <laughs> how's a child going to tell a child to like not watch a video? Sorry. I would advise that you tell your parents, if you're a child, about this video um, and ask them. But I'm sure they would not want you watching it since it's such a dark subject put my headphones in. I don't even think they put this in school, you know. I think they uh, definitely don't. They don't teach this in school, so yeah. Anyways, let's go ahead and check out. Let's see. The Islamic Conquest of India Prophecy. Um, so, here we go. Hi everyone and welcome, this is the Apostle Prophet. I hope you're all having a great week. On my two live chats that I had so far, many people asked me a specific question that I want to talk about now. I'm going to tell you everything I know about it and what I think about it. Our topic is a prophecy by the peaceful Prophet Muhammad about the conquest of India. Yes, India. Many people know this prophecy as Ghazwa e Hind. Ghazwa is an Arabic word which stands for a battle or a military expedition, but was after the rise of Islam more and more used for holy wars. The term Ghazwa e Hind is not really Arabic and is supposed to stand for the holy war against India or the conquest of India. The term itself is not mentioned in any fundamental source of Islam. It was derived from uh, several sources in which Muhammad made promises to his followers. Very sweet ones, very peaceful ones. Let's just jump into it. The Messenger of Allah said, There are two groups of my Ummah whom Allah will free from the fire. The group that invades India and the group that will be with Jesus. Don't be confused by the part about Jesus. According to Islamic eschatology, Jesus will return before the end of the world and serve in Allah's cause. He will kill the Islamic Antichrist or anti-Allah, <laughs> break the cross, which means he will end Christianity, tell Christians that Islam is the true religion. I think it's pretty, I mean, they say that Islam is like a peaceful religion and people get mad when you say it's not. I mean, all religions are pretty much peaceful now, but back then, no religion was peaceful. They were, they were willing to do anything to make sure their message got out and they got more followers. It's no different than social media. It's like, I'm not saying social people on social media kill each other, but do they treat it like a religion as in like, they try to force their beliefs and influence you to do things. Uh, and religion to me is kind of like the same in some ways, except it's like way more extreme and it's tied to this faith of a higher being. So that's, it's, it's different. But, and like I said, I have nothing against it. But um, just wanting followers and wanting people to follow this text and we have no, we, we kind of have no proof in some ways that the men that wrote these texts were guided by God, you know. Um, you know, I'm not saying God doesn't exist. What if they saw God and then decided they wanted to write a book 
or they just collected all these stories. What if all these stories and these Bibles and these biblical texts, like the Quran and the Holy Bible and, you know, and so and so forth. Like, what if they don't even, what if they're not even real or they're just exaggerated? Like, it's kind of, it's going to be, it's going to be crazy in these next, like, 10 to 15 years because we have, like, quantum computing technology coming. And we don't know if God exists for sure once those get up and running and um, it just tells you a billion times more of information that the human brain can't comprehend. You know, uh, AI is coming. Like, it, it's getting serious out here. So, yeah, I don't know. Then he will also exterminate pigs. <laughs> and something that always has to be there in Islam, fight the Jews. But enough of that for now, I will cover that in a different video. The important part is India. In this hadith, Muhammad promises that a group among his believers will invade India in order to bring it under Muslim control, and they will be free from hellfire and go to paradise for that. What a peaceful prophecy, right? This hadith is graded by Islamic scholars mostly as good evidence, and by other scholars as fully authentic. In this case, it is an undeniable part of Sunni Islam and partially of Shia Islam. Some people use several other hadith about the same issue, even though those are deemed unauthentic. But that doesn't change a thing. One Islamic hadith exists, and it's very important. Some scholars, especially in more recent times, interpreted the hadith as a prophecy that was already fulfilled when Muslims invaded and subjugated the Indian subcontinent a thousand years ago. But the majority and more accepted scholars have interpreted this as a prophecy that can't have come true yet, because Muhammad it was talking about the end times and the world didn't um, end back then as far as I know. Therefore, the general belief is that India will be conquered again, once and for all, in the future. To be very honest, fair and clear, the vast majority of Muslims globally have probably never heard of this prophecy, especially if they are not from India or Pakistan. So there is no global ambition among Muslims to uh, come together and conquer India. But a lot of Muslims in Pakistan and India still believe firmly in this and still use this prophecy as a part of propaganda, religious propaganda. Some even think that the process has started already and that Hinduism will be subjugated and India will be conquered by Muslims. They are proud of it. And if you say something, they will attack you and tell you about how Islam is all about peace. You can just make a quick search for... <laughs> I mean, let's just be honest. Like, it's true. Like, they want to... You can't have both. You can't be violent and peaceful. It doesn't make sense. But like I said... That, like I'm not, I'm not necessarily saying that all Muslims are the same and think this way. They're genuinely Muslims that grow up and are nice, just like there's Christians who grow up who are nice. You know, every religion has had their evil, wicked ways of gaining more and more followers, and um, I think it's a conversation that needs to be had. I think we need to talk about it. It, it, this is rough, man. This is tough. <laughs> you know? Like, damn. That's why I hint right here on YouTube and you can find a lot of videos usually by Pakistanis or Pakistani Imams that approve of this and add to the prophecy. And in the comment section, you can see how peacefully people make comments such as I am ready for Ghazwai Hind. It is a form of disgusting barbaric propaganda, but it is also highly religious as said. Some proponents of this prophecy, majorly Pakistanis, believe in a future war between India and Pakistan that would, that would fulfill this prophecy. Considering that India is far superior in military power and much more likely than Pakistan, that's very unlikely. And using nuclear weapons on each other would be some special form of suicide for both nations in the long run. That's why there are other groups like radical Muslims in India's troubled and Muslim-dominated terroristic Kashmir region that spread this propaganda widely on the internet and want every Muslim to believe in this. 
Others that remind Indians of this prophecy very often are unsurprisingly Islamic terrorist organizations. Dang. And fundamentalist Muslims who honestly stick to the scripture. The hadith and current propaganda is not the only issue. There have been numerous scholars and other people in history who made predictions and invitations about the Muslim conquest of India. Most importantly, Shah Nimatullah Wali, a Persian Sufi scholar and poet from the 15th century, made predictions about Muslims and Indians having several wars and the Muslims finally conquering India and bringing it under permanent Islamic rule. He is still respected very much among Sunni Muslims, and among Pakistanis and Indians, he is seen as a very holy and very truthful scholar. Based on Shahani Mithullah's words, many Muslims nowadays make insane predictions and interpretations, literally praying for it to happen as soon as possible. If you make a quick search... Whoa, 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 whoa. You have them praying to go to war with the country and, and take it over and kill people? online, you will see a lot of barbarism, or, or simply Islamism, by regular and fundamental Muslims. As in every other controversial Islamic issue, this topic is also dealt with a lot of hypocrisy by moderate Muslims, who will try to tell you that Ghazwa e Hind had nothing to do with Islam, and that it was only used by extremists. As usual, they totally ignore the authentic Hadith. Others simply blame it on Islam haters, or Hindus, or Indians. I guess all these Islamic pages, videos, short films, and even the Hadith were just made up by a secret alliance of Hindus and um, Israel. <laughs> Israel has to be a part of that. I guess all the Hadith about Constantinople, Jerusalem, Rome, Yemen, and so on were also all made up. Netanyahu himself went back in time and fabricated those hadith or changed their meanings. This warmongering prophecy might sound very surprising to people who are not very familiar with Islamic scripture, with the Quran and the hadith. But if you are familiar, it's not very surprising. Muhammad made such prophecies about conquest and slaughter and bloodshed very often. Most notably, he made prophecies about conquering Persia, Iraq, Constantinople, Damascus, Jerusalem, and so on. Muhammad's followers were therefore very ambitious in conquering those places. In other ideologies, you would condemn such promises as barbaric. In the militarist religion of Islam, they call it prophecy. There are even so-called prophecies about a final conquest of Jerusalem, which is very widely... So basically, they had their own crusades where they would invade and kill anybody that they believed in or what they believed in or just wanted to call conquest. Okay. I wonder why this isn't in the history books. ...used and believed in by Palestinians and many other Muslims around the world. They believe that uh, Jerusalem will be conquered a final time and Israel will be destroyed forever. There are even conquest prophecies about Rome. Muslims never managed to conquer Rome, but many believe that it will happen definitely in the near future. Quite weird, considering that uh, Rome doesn't even have such a big importance anymore in today's world. But then again, Muhammad also made end-time prophecies about the Byzantine Empire, which uh, died 500 years ago. As said, the belief in the final conquest of India is not a globally held belief among Muslims. Many don't have any idea about it, many don't even care about it. It is, however, still believed in by many Muslims in Pakistan, in Kashmir, and in other regions in India. It is a very dangerous belief, which is held by people who also ironically complain about Islamophobia and misunderstanding Islam. It is a dangerous belief that motivates dangerous people. Then again, it is an idea that comes from a dangerous, supremacist, and violent ideology, Islam. If other Muslims who don't believe in the Ghazwa e Hind are disturbed by my commentary or by the commentary of others, they shouldn't come and tell me to shut up or others. They should start directly in their own circle and discourage those Muslims who still believe that Muslims will conquer India and bring it under Islamic control forever. Because, one, it is dangerous, barbaric, and proves that Islam is violent. And two, India will never be conquered by Islam. Now turn your device off and cry. Have fun. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please... <laughs> He's telling the truth, though. India will never be conquered by Islam. It, it's insane. They have destroyed them. 
<laughs> Nothing against the religion of Islam. I just think it has a very violent and very, very radical past, and they've had so many crazy ideologies. Not to say that the, the, it can't evolve and become a better religion. I, I won't follow Islam. I won't follow these. I won't even follow Christianity because I know the past. You know, when Christianity Christianity was used during African American slavery and hell, it's being used throughout history to control all kinds of people, just not, uh, you know, Africans during the slave trade. It's you gotta you gotta look at these biblical texts and these religions and say it looks like it was made more for control than it was for anything, you know. So, um, yeah. Don't forget to like, to share, and to subscribe. My videos are not monetized, so you can watch everything without any interruption. If you want to support my cause anyway, you can do so on Patreon. The link is below in the description. I appreciate every kind of support very much. Thank you. Have a great weekend and stay away from Islam. <laughs> Have a great weekend and stay away from Islam. <laughs> All right, guys. I was educated. Um, I like seeing both sides. You guys know I've reacted to the Islamic um, culture before, and now I'm reacting to stuff that opposes it. Uh, crazy. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. Thanks, Matthew, for donating. Thank you for supporting the channel. If any of you want to donate and support the channel even more, um, the Streamlabs link is down below. Follow me on all my social media. Um, also, if you want to do Patreon or subscribe star or even stream my music, that helps too. Uh, and uh, thanks so much and peace.